A Vulcan's gonna do what a Vulcan's gonna do. But the Andorians, they were happy to supply us the phasers. When analyzing the Axanar universe, a key plot point revolves around Vulcan's decision to leave the Federation and thereby exit the war. This betrayal was conceived in hopes of forcing the Federation to the negotiating table. While Axanar is a fan fiction and thus can be easily ignored by many, the interesting fact is that, with the caveat of one specific instance, the Vulcans have historically been very quick to withdraw support and hamstring Starfleet and canon. As an example, we observe instances in Star Trek Enterprise when the United Earth was fighting the Zindi. You owe the humans nothing. They chose to leave Earth before they were ready. We held back their warp program for 100 years, a policy which you supported. It wouldn't be limited to Enterprise either. The Vulcan High Command would refuse to assist in multiple ways, including in the original series, where the Vulcans pushed for peace when the Klingons were vulnerable, in the next generation, where the Vulcans often wanted to back down from fights, and in several Discovery Era series. Seemingly, the only conflict where the Vulcans didn't resist an open confrontation was the Dominion War, and we really didn't see their reaction during that time, at least not initially. Hell, in that series, we know that Berman wanted Vulcan to secede from the Union after the Leighton coup had been exposed, but unfortunately, there weren't enough resources nor enough time for production. So, with that in mind, the Vulcans apparently shy away from a fight and are willing to even hamstring their allies in order to force peace, both in a lot of canon and fan fiction. The question is, why? Well, there are a few possible reasons. First, the Vulcans are apparently very good at war. Their base nature, unrestrained by logic, saw devastating conflicts on Vulcan and with other worlds. These fights would be so brutal that even atomic weapons were not out of the question. It would take a Vulcan suing for peace and logic, by the name of Serac, by the by, to unite the Vulcans and purge all emotion. This would serve all Vulcans well until the Vulcan High Command became corrupted. At least according to the Sirenites, they were corrupted. That depends on who you're talking to. She'd do anything to spread her deviant beliefs. Like you saw, will show us our true path. The governing and militaristic pieces of Vulcan society would begin to fall under the sway of Romulan elements and was becoming more and more aggressive. The Vulcan Reformation stopped this practice when the United Earth assisted a coup of the Vulcan High Command and the Sirenites took power. It wouldn't be Archer if he wasn't overthrowing governments. From this point on, Vulcans adopted a more pacifistic stance and became a hindrance towards any war the Federation would engage in. I mean, most likely the Vulcan High Command would agree with Russell when he said war does not determine who is correct, only who remains. But again, we have to ask the question, why? Well, we've somewhat answered it already, but from the standpoint of the Vulcans, wars only cause pain and hatred. They also have the chance of reverting the Vulcans to who they were. Uncomfortable peace is more preferable to victory. You're saving lives if you don't fight. We see this ideology paint the United Federation of Planets quite a bit. Indeed, these principles are how Starfleet operates. Starfleet always fights with half measures and is more willing to accept terms that they don't have to. And I believe all of this is because of the influence of the Vulcans, or at least the threat of them leaving. Starfleet would always be on its back foot and more defensive than offensive in confrontations. It would take a threat like the Borg or Dominion and massive losses to change that perspective. So with that, let's take a look at the Axanar universe. The bad blood between the humans and the Klingons meant that the job of preventing war and leading the peace delegations fell to Vulcan. Regrettably, we failed. During the Four Years' War, Starfleet is fighting for its very existence as the Klingons devastate everything they hold dear. The Vulcans had been against the war entirely and were the key negotiators to prevent it altogether. When that failed, they wouldn't provide any offensive weapons, though curiously they would fight in the conflict. In an attempt to win, Starfleet designed and launched the Air Race class. Well, that was it. Something had to change, or we were done. The first goal was create a class of ship that could spring Starfleet back into action, back into battle. We had to leapfrog Klingon technology. It was called the Ares class. 
This design proved to be a significant change and pushed the Klingons back. However, the Empire responded and launched D7s, which ultimately countered these gains. The war was now basically a stalemate. The Klingons were slowly gaining their territory back, but the gains were minute. Back and forth, back and forth, it seemed like there was no end in sight. Every time one side looked like they were about to win to end the destruction, the other side made a technological gain, and the fighting then continued. Space was littered with the debris of ships and the dead. Planets that once had thriving colonies and families became dead, barren worlds. It had to stop, whatever the cost. When looking at the end game, in a Federation loss at least, it was unlikely the Klingons would completely destroy the diverse organization. Most likely, the influence of the Federation would just be diminished. And even if the Federation was destroyed, life under the Klingons would be harsh, but people would still be alive. At least, that's the only logic I can see behind the decision for the Vulcans to secede. However, their logic is very flawed. For sentient, sapient life, it is not enough to simply exist, to live. One has to have reason and purpose for life to really mean anything. Now, of course, hashtag not all. I'm sure there are some species that don't need that, but based on what we see in the shows themselves, most do. Life might exist under the banner of the Klingon Empire, but it would be life in definition alone. The Federation and Starfleet needed to exist to give people hope and let them explore who they were, to actually know what living is. Now, I understand that is little solace for the mother who lost her child in a battle or a generational family line wiped out of existence. It's a really nuanced conversation and one where there has to be give and take so it's not completely illogical for the Vulcans to cling to it. In the end, the Vulcans would always hold the United Federation of Planets back from becoming the Terran Empire, but they did that at some cost. Sometimes it was in lives, sometimes just resources. At their core, Vulcans were warriors. They were just so good at it that they had to become pacifists in order for the universe to work. But what do you guys think? Do the Vulcans hamstring the Federation unnecessarily? Do you think their actions result in unnecessary death? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next. Lore Reloaded.